Let me tell you this. Joe Budden is the number one broadcaster right now. And when I mean the number one broadcaster, means on this mic, his words are cutting through and affecting an audience. He, if, if just broadcasting and just being able to talk is a skill, currently he's like he's having an MVP season. My man gave a monologue to Taxstone. And I said, fuck, if this wasn't a oral beaten, I don't know what is. Nothing against tax tone, but, you know, I, I respect broadcasting. And um, I got to play this on here. Let me see if I can find a timestamp or something on the sword. Uh, Jesus, this shit is... This shit was crazy. Now, it, it, here's the thing. I think he's going to explain the beef already with him and Taxstone, so I don't need to explain it. But when I give people credit uh, or I give my peers credit is because I'm watching how they're delivering content and I'm just not a hater and I could stand up and clap it up when I'm like, oh, this nigga's killing it right now. I'm sorry. He's killing it. Like acne. <laughs> Listen, I was getting my little back massage, having a blast came across some tweets that I figured I should read to the audience. They didn't sit well with my spirit. <laughs> like a teachable moment. Hey, by the way, this to me, this is like, I always aspired, and like, I think the War of Chirac was kind of like, because some of those I used to write too, if you guys didn't know. But, like, you know how Charmaine has a donkey today? I think, that that's that's almost like the fucking dunk contest for like a journalist. No, not journalist, but like a talking head, right? I think my rants are like my version of it. Now, this is when Joe starts dropping sixty on this nigga, and hopefully somebody can get this message back to whose benefit. Wordplay. You pulled that little gun in a small. I seen the wordplay, right? Room, endangering the lives of moms, dads, uncles, all. That's what I have for Mr. Tax. It's I like Tax Stone, but I ain't gonna lie. That nigga Joe went crazy just now. Um, holy. I think he has some more smoke for some other niggas. He gave a little Rory a little bit of smoke too. Bitch ass nigga. Who else is on the docket? Fresh and fit. Oh, shit. You niggas didn't sound believable when y'all were saying it. Your voices were trembling, nigga. <laughs> Fucking voice is scary as hell. Unfresh and unfit. Motherfuckers. <laughs> the end. Nah, listen, if I was with Joe or with Fresh and Fit, I would stop that. Listen, there would be no fight. There would be no fight. You know what I mean? It would be a good podcast. But I do know Fresh and Fit were very upset at him, just like he was probably not giving a fuck. I don't know, whatever, but no fights. Be in with these guys. Who else is on the fucking docket? Oh, Rory! <laughs> oh, man. Um, I, I've never seen two guys just mishandle their their runway to potential success. The talent was so limited with Rory and Mealy Maul that they, I think they developed an ego. I remember one of them, like Mealy Maul, was saying, Joe wasn't selling shit out, or I guess Joe had made some reference like, yo, they around the corner, the line around the corner for me. And basically they were like, no, it's really for us because you weren't doing this without us. And clearly they have now left Joe and they had a lot of, you know, people were saying, oh, they're doing record numbers in this and third. But then these guys also, with lacking in talent and developing an ego, I always thought... I would, I was, actually, I would have never sat down with these niggas. Nah, I would never sat down with these. They should have been more engaging. Actually, they just suck. I don't even know what I'm saying. Like these niggas just fucking suck. I'm not gonna dish y'all. Y'all don't deserve. But they did. Y'all gotta work harder. Who else said something? Oh, then the other nigga said something. I can't address him either. Who? He got. He got to work a little harder. If you want to address him, you can. No, it's okay. He he has to work a little harder. <clears throat> Hey, uh, I know who they're talking about, 
And Joe's one of those people, too, who made me realize stop beefing with Brick Baby and them. Uh, I'm going to stop saying these names because even he refused to say the name. I know who he's talking about because that nigga be dissing me, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of realizing we got to start starve some of these niggas of attention because some of these guys, they're just mentioning any name to go viral. Um, the, 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 Charlemagne has a new lap dog that is trying to head fast down the tax stone route. They're trying to call people out. The only difference is, at least when Tax Stone had a podcast, he started creating content that was genuinely engaging, so he was developing an audience as well. The new lap dog that Charlemagne got uses the same tactics. It's still, you know what I mean, supposedly generals of streets, but just not engaging on the mic. And that's the problem. Um, for that individual, you know, I, I think Joe has the right approach. You got to starve him of all fucking attention. A lot hard. Oh, I see what you I, I thought you saw. Okay. See, I don't even talk to these niggas, man. I, I, don't, I don't. The truth of the matter, I don't pay attention to nothing that none of these niggas say. I um, okay, damn. He referred to Charlemagne as the B Mike on the Brilliant Idiots podcast. I think I think saying that Charlemagne is a B Mike anywhere just sounds crazy. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say Charlemagne is a B Mike at all, but I will say that Schultz is. It, it, I think his star power is shining and is shining so bright that there was a time that when you watched Brilliant Idiots. You would say, hey, this is Charlemagne and like his friend, that's a comedian. These days, I think because number one, Flagrant 2 is just a behemoth of a podcast and a platform that's leaps and mounds and probably 10 times as popular as, as uh, Brilliant Idiots. The cachet of, the cachet of uh, uh, Andrew Schultz has risen so much that... If you ask me, I look at him as equals to a Charlemagne in terms of what they're both bringing towards that podcast. If possibly he's not bringing more. Charlemagne, historically, you know, the podcast has been like a side thing. His thing is radio. Schultz is heavily into the podcast space till, you know, again, he's had at a time he had like a bunch of podcasts. Now He's, he's settled with just one with flagrant two. And I do think that I don't think he's doing the heavy lifting in terms of conversation and shit like that when it comes to um, brilliant idiots. But I do think they're equals. I don't think they were equals before. And I think I think Joe's just not liking Charlemagne to say some shit like that, because at one point you used to call Schultz his lackey. You can't switch up and now say that Schultz is the A mic now. Right. So it's all good. Somebody said, stop making excuses. How am I making excuses? Schultz is lit. Like I, I, I think, I think that's the acknowledgement that we're making. That's the, that's the acknowledgement we're making. And I would say this as well. I think from a content level, currently, while Schultz is lit and it's, there's a new energy to bring idiots out of all of Charlemagne's platforms. Currently, Brilliant Idiots is the his is the best platform for him, right? The Breakfast Club is still the Breakfast Club, but you know maybe we're comparing it to we're comparing it to iterations of itself. And I'm not saying it's not, it's, it's failing or nothing like that, but I'm just talking about content wise. Breakfast Club is a Breakfast Club, but Brilliant Idiots has really been kicking it up recently. Anyway, somebody says.